Okay, so here's another example of graphing expanded polynomials. And what you might want to do is you might want to try this one if you haven't already. So write it down and see if you can go through all the steps that we've talked about in some of the other examples and see if you can work all the way through it. Uh, you may have to do some synthetic divisions. You may have to do several, so be aware of that. And then you could pause the video, work through the problem, and come back and check it. So right now, pause it, try the problem, and then come back and check. Okay, hopefully you've done it, gone through it all, and uh, let's see if we got it right. Or if you got stuck, you can watch a little bit of it and pause and continue. So try to help yourself as much as you can. Just don't copy everything you know I do. You've got to have to do it on your own. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the end behavior. So I kind of wrote this down. I wrote it out already because it takes a little bit of time and just to even go over it. So um, the end behavior, the end behavior model is going to be just x squared because this is positive even. Sorry, end behavior model. All positive even functions are going to look like y equals positive x squared, which is going to just going to be like a u or up and up. So that's your end behavior model right there. Uh, your y-intercept is just going to be the point 0 when x is 0, y is negative 30. So that's what your y-intercept. Okay, and then uh, we want to find all of our possible rational roots or zeros, and that's going to be factors of 30, that's our constant number, over factors of 2, the leading coefficient. And all the factors of 30, we got a lot of them. Plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, and 30. Those all go into 30. And the factors of 2 are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. So take all the combinations, 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 1, 5 over 1, 6 over 1, 10 over 1, 15 over 1, 30 over 1, and then 1 over 2. So I wrote those out. So these are the 1s over 1. These are the numbers over, the numerators over 1. And these are the numerators over 2. 1 over 2, 2 over 2, 3 over 2, 5 over 2, 6 over 2, 10 over 2, 15 over 2, and 30 over 2. So these are your possible rational zeros or roots. But we do have some repeats. 2 over 2 is 1, so I've got that, so I can cross that out. Um, 6 over 2 is 3, and I've already got that, so I can cross that out. 10 over 2 is 5, I've already got that. And 30 over 2 is 15, I've already got that. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, with plus or minus, we've got 24 possible rational roots. Okay, so we'll get to work. Now, since we've got a 2 here, okay, I'm probably going to have one of these fractions with a half as a good possibility, so I'll try those first. And that would be a good way to start. So just don't start with your whole numbers. Start, start, try with your fractions, at least a small fraction, and see. Then you can kind of bounce back and forth. So I started with one half, and I did the work over here already, so you can see. So just save a little bit of time. So I did my synthetic division with one half, and I got, and I used my coefficients up here. These are the, co the, the numbers that we use for our synthetic division. 2, 1, negative 38, negative 79, and negative 30. So there's your 2. 1, negative 38, negative 79, negative 30, and I tried 1 half. And this is why your knowledge and your ability with synthetic division is very important. So I bring down my 2, 1 half of 2 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, half of 2 is 1, uh, negative 38 plus 1 is negative 37. This is where I have problems because I have an odd number. Half of an odd number is going to give me a fraction. And half of negative 37 is negative 18 and a half, and now I'm going to have 1 half, and I don't have any way to get rid of the fraction, so I might as well stop there. Go to the next one. So the next one was negative one half. And I bring down my two. Negative one half times two is negative one. One plus negative one is zero. Bring down zero, negative 38. A negative times a negative is positive. Half of 38 is eight, 19. Negative 79 plus 19 is negative 60. And a negative times a negative is positive. Half of 60 is 30. There's my zero. So this was one of my zeros. So x plus one half was one of my factors, and this is my remaining, this is my reduced equation. Remember, I started with 4, so this is going to be third. 2x cubed, no x squares, minus 38x, minus 60. Now, we're looking for zeros, so since we're looking for zeros, we can divide both sides of this equation by 2. 
So we can divide out the 2 and simplify it. So that's what I did. So this would be the same when I'm looking for zeros, that is. Have the same zeros as this equivalent equation, x cubed minus 19x minus 30. Just divide everything by 2. So it gives me some smaller numbers. So now I'm going to try to find my other rational root. So I can reduce this down to a quadratic, and I can solve it by any of the methods I can use with the quadratic. So I'm going to try 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2. So since we have a fraction, we're probably done with the fractions, because we only have a 2 in front. And uh, I talked about that in class, why that works out usually like that. So I tried 1s. So 1, 1, 1, 1, negative 18, negative 40 didn't work. I tried negative 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 18, positive 18. Still didn't work. Try 2. Uh, 2, 2, 4, negative 15, negative 30, negative 60, but this is looking more encouraging. So I tried negative 2, and lo and behold, negative 2 did work. 1, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, negative 2, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, negative 19 plus 4 is negative 15, uh, positive 30, there's my 0. And go through and check and make sure you're doing the synthetic division correctly if you have any reservations about that. Okay. So now my factors are, I have my x plus 1 half as a factor, and since negative 2 worked, x plus 2 is a factor, and what's left is this nice, simple trinomial. And I know it's going to factor my signs here. This tells me that these signs are going to be different. Sign of large would be negative, so my signs would be negative, positive, and multiply to give 15, and different by 2 would be um, 5 and 2. I'm sorry, 5 times 3. Multiply to get 15 and different by 2 would be 5 and 3. So 5 goes over here because that's the larger and 3. So 5 and 3. Okay. So these are my factors. Now I can take a look at that. I turn to another page here. So these are my factors. X plus 1 half, X plus 2, X minus 5, X plus 3. So those are my factors. X plus 1 half, X plus 2, X minus 5, X plus 3. And these are my zeros. Negative 1 half, negative 2, 5, negative 3. So I put these on my graph. So I drew a graph, and these are my zeros. There's my negative 3, there's my 5, there's my negative 2, there's my negative 1 half, and here's my my y-intercept, remember, was negative 0, negative 30. Go back and remember our y-intercept. And we also have the end behavior is up and up. So now I'll sketch it and always try with it, work, work with a pencil. Now remember, it's going to start here. It's going to come down. It's going to probably be the bottom of the little valley. It would probably be between those two numbers. And then the tip would be up there. And then my other one would probably be between these two numbers here. Down somewhere. It's going to be the the bottom of this valley because I've got almost in there. In other words, I've got five, that's two and a half, and this is a little bit of left, so it scoots it over a little bit towards two. So we'll start over here, come down like this, curve up here, then we're going to come down, and we're going to come down pretty steep because we're going to go through this point, this intercept. And we're going to probably go down a lot lower. And then we're going to come back up through the 5. So it'll look something like this. And like I said, that's why I use a pencil so you can kind of fill that sketch in. So it's good. And this is a little ragged down here. And you can go to an online graphing calculator. Just, just Google graphing cal online graphing calculator. You'll find them. And you can put this equation in. You can put it in factor form or in expanded form, and you'll be surprised how close we are with our sketch. I think it actually goes pretty low. Checked it on my graphing calculator, but otherwise it wasn't too bad, so we're pretty close. This might be a little bit lower over here than I wrote, but this is with, all, with the information we've got right now, this is all we could do. And that, that's pretty, you know, I mean, if you stop to think about it, you know, we started with this. 
And we know that this actually looks something like this. Without putting a table of values or, or finding points or anything like that, we got pretty close. So that, that's pretty amazing. Okay? So again, go back, review the steps, make sure you're comfortable with everything.